what were some points in this stage? It could be a little earlier or a little later, but you know, key points that stand out where you felt like a fully fledged grown up. You kind of, you knew in this moment, oh wow, I'm a grown up now. <laughs> okay. Early adulthood. We're there. We've made our way into adulthood, right? So with this early adulthood, we're spanning really the early 20s and into the 30s. And this is where now um, we're really a grown up now, right? Or at least we're supposed to be. Um, I think that the initial stage of adulthood, there's a kind of almost a going around pretending like we're adults. <laughs> You know, we're trying it on for size more so than fully feeling it, if we're being honest. <laughs> adulthood really, early adulthood, is really also actually another delicate moment. Um, out there adulting, uh, but most of us are really still carrying some psychological burdens from our earlier stages of development. And we're kind of trying to figure out how we're going to resolve them. We're figuring out how we're going to continue to grow and develop into the person we're supposed to become. We're watching other people around us, comparing ourselves, and we're figuring out how we're going to kind of, and what we're going to sort of contribute to the world around us, right? Again, lots going on. And additionally, I don't think, you know, we're really doing this with the clarity I just described. <laughs> you know, we're not really aware that that's what's happening, right? Because it's really just the first time we've ever engaged with this stage. So usually I think in this stage, we're fumbling our way through it a bit, right? A lot of fumbling around in this stage, but sort of pretending to ourselves and to others that we're not. As a little bit of an aside, um, I think that remembering some of this can help us when we're dealing with some of the younger adults in our lives, whether that's children or sometimes people we're working with, you know? Because sometimes it's around these points that we see these sort of uh, miscommunications between the, the generations, like a communication gap, right? Misunderstandings or frustrations that occur between generations. Now, I think more often than not, these frustrations are really uh, usually born out of a kind of um, an underlying um, anxiety, right? Our natural, healthy, um, and well-intentioned worry about the next generation, right? And about how they're approaching life. And we worry about maybe some of the values that we hold not necessarily being imparted. They're not sort of living them the same way we would, right? Um, and we're worried maybe that some of the things that have been meaningful to us don't seem to be as meaningful to them, right? All of this is normal. We just don't want it to cloud the communication between generations. So sometimes I think what goes on um, between older generation and the younger generation is instead of kind of saying, uh, okay, wow, we think really differently about this, don't we? You know, and this is a little uncomfortable and, you know, tell me what you think and I'll tell you what I think about that. Uh, instead of approaching it that way, I think usually what we're seeing is like um, a little bit of judgment or frustration or exasperation, you know? Instead of, you know, saying, tell me what you think, let me tell you what I think, and a healthy back and forth, we're getting something more like, uh, you're doing it wrong, or you just don't get it, or things like this, right? We communicate that to the younger generation, and then they communicate that right back to us, right? Instead of finding some common ground. One peripheral benefit to reminiscing about our own early adulthood, I think, is that I think it actually can help us to experience uh, or find ways to experience more common ground with younger adults in our life. Because as much as the historical moment may be different, right, between, you know, one generation and another, this stage itself, you know, does have some predictable hallmarks. So some things that we all go through, right? So to start us off on this topic, um, why don't you take a minute and think back? Did you ever have an older adult or an elder in your life who was maybe trying to help? You knew they were invested in you in some way. You know, they wanted good things for you. But for whichever reasons, there was just a lot of miscommunication or frustration. The help didn't always seem to help, you know, or you couldn't always use it effectively, um, you know, something like that. 
Take a minute and think about that. What was that like for you? What were they doing that didn't work? What were you doing that didn't help either? See if reflecting on that might even just help you sometimes to engage uh, with some of the young adults in your life a little more proactively. Now think about the older adults in your life when you were a young adult, right? Who helped you during this stage. How did they help you? What did you need that they provided? How did they provide that for you? Now, many a times, this is uh, the same person or people from the previous question, isn't it? So relationships are really quite a mixed bag. But again, see if this also helps you to adjust how you're approaching your relationships with your young adults in your life, right? Communication is a really important part of, um, you know, maintaining that generational tethering, keeping it good, keeping it vibrant, keeping it working. Okay, so let's do a little more reminiscing on early adulthood. What were some points in this stage it could be a little earlier or a little later, but you know, key points that stand out where you felt like a fully fledged grown up. You kind of, you knew in this moment, oh wow, I'm a grown up now. <laughs> you know, so that could be things like buying your first car, getting your first real job or your first real interview, um, moving out for the first time, paying rent, having a child can come towards the beginning or later end of the stage. Sometimes it's little things like wearing a suit. Sometimes it's big things like losing a parent, right? Sometimes something like buying a certain item that you'd always wanted or being able to afford something you couldn't before. Sometimes an event like a graduation or maybe a first serious girlfriend or boyfriend, first breakup, getting married. These are all big ones. Think about the ones that in your early adulthood said to you, wow, I'm an adult. I'm a grown-up now. Let's stay with this for a minute too, though, because I want you to think back. What did this fully-fledged adult event feel like for you? Was it all positive, right? Some are. You know, graduation can feel all positive. Some are also a mixture of feelings, though, just to point that out. Did any of those feel a bit mixed? You know, maybe you felt um, excited about something new, but also maybe a little bit anxious, uncertain, or a little apprehensive. Can I pull this off? You know, do I have what it takes to do this kind of thing? I think we all feel a little like that in parenthood. Um, maybe you felt kind of confident because you had just met a goal that you had for yourself, but maybe meeting that goal also left you a little unsure about what your next goal should be. You know, one door's closing, something else is opening up. Um, alternatively, you know, maybe you felt a little disappointed or disillusioned at having failed at something. It could be a big, really big part of this stage. Failure is important too, you know. But maybe in that failure, maybe somehow you came to realize that it just wasn't as important as you thought, right? Or maybe it felt like a little bit of freedom even, you know, to move on to something else. What I'm trying to point out for us is that often some of the big events in this are equal parts excitement and uncertainty, equal parts good or, you know, mixed feelings, because um, really we are out there more than ever now kind of going it alone, right? And that can feel mixed. Now, here's another question. Were you ever out there at this stage sort of successfully adulting, right, during these years, but feeling a little bit of what we call imposter syndrome, right? So I'm pulling it off. I'm out there. You know, people think I'm the real thing, but inside I don't feel like that, right? And if people really knew me, right, if they really knew where I came from, or if they really knew how bad I messed up in college, you know, if they really knew all this baggage that I had, they'd see I'm not really the real deal, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, that can be a feature of this stage, uh, and sometimes that can carry on into later stages too, right? Alternatively, were there any points during this stage where you felt just a little lost or a little confused? Also very normal. Who was adulting with you along the way? Who was also growing up and, you know, being a grown-up, right? Were there any siblings, maybe girlfriends, boyfriends, um, you know, spouse, friends, 
how did you help one another through this stage? You know, how were you adulting together and helping one another? And no doubt there was also a little letting one another down too. What did you do for fun during this stage? What were you into? What gave you pleasure? You know, how did you spend your time off? What excited you? Where were you living just practically? And did you like it? What do you remember about it? What was a popular or impactful film or book from this period of your life? You know, do you remember reading something or taking something in a story that really impacted you or, you know, was compelling in some way? Was romantic intimacy um, either dating or through marriage, you know, was this easy for you or was it complex? How did you experience that? No. Did you have any children during this stage? Did you become a parent at any point in this stage? It can usually start around here, sometimes a little bit early for people, sometimes later, you know? What was becoming a parent like for you? What do you remember? Did you take any risks in this stage or did you have any big adventures? And take a minute and think back. In what ways during this stage, during this period, were you strong? Were you resilient? Now, something we can take away on this, on this stage, is that um, identity is still very much being shaped in young adulthood. It's still a little bit precarious, right? Uh, confident young adults may not be nearly as confident as they appear. That's something for us to think about. And young adults uh, who seem to be low in confidence or, you know, maybe um, drifting a bit or whatever, a bit lost, you know, they may have tons of potential that they just haven't harnessed yet or figured out just yet. This is all sort of par for the course. This was likely true of you a little bit at this stage too, you know? So hopefully we have plenty of older adults to help us with this along the way. Here's something else that might help us. Um, I'm gonna ask you to fill in the following statement. One thing I would tell my younger adult self is, Okay, take a time, take some time with that one, I think. And um, another one, I'm proud of my young adult self for, okay, and take a little time and complete those sentences. And when you're done with that, is there an image or even a picture that comes to your mind when you think about this stage, you know, something that sort of goes, oh yeah, that really captures that stage. Bring that to mind. Great. That's a good start on early adulthood. Well done. We move on to middle age next. Mm -hmm.